Right, is this working? Can everyone hear? Wonderful. Um, okay, so firstly, um, a lot about, about us. Um, I'm David McKendrick, this is Lee Belcher. Hello. Um, about three months ago, we set up our company, which is called BAM. Um, we've not quite had the time to get round to doing our own identity, so we pinched one um, from a, <laughs> a rather famous artist. I um, hope he doesn't mind. But given that we're talking about art tonight, I think it's quite appropriate. Um, but BAM stands for Belcher and McKendrick, quite simply. Also, is another meaning that we don't really tell our more corporate clients. Um, and if you're, a, if you're a Glaswegian, what are you saying? I'm a BAM. Um, yes. Below average mentality also sums up myself and Lee to a certain extent. Um, so, yeah, as, as Rob mentioned, three months ago, we had quite civilised, relatively glamorous jobs. Lee was the art director at Wallpaper. I was the creative director at Esquire magazine. Um, and yeah, it was, it was quite a nice place to be. Lee got to... <laughs> <laughs> Lee got to travel the world. There he is in Singapore looking a little bit bored. Um, I got to get my picture taken with famous people to show off to my mates, basically. Um, and this man, um, it's quite a nice photo of him actually, very flattering. Jeremy Langmead, um, me and Lee first met eight years ago, Wallpaper Magazine, we were working together. Um, Jeremy was editor-in-chief at the time, um, and we have remained friends for a long time. Um, this is where we cheat, and we do a bit of a tag team, which makes it doubly easy. <laughs> so over to Lee for this bit. Oh, yes. Shit, sorry. sorry. <laughs> so as David said, um, Wallpaper was where he first met Jeremy. He um, has gone on to become the um, chief content officer at Christie's. Um, by doing that, he's kind of building a team to kind of work on a lot of the content across Christie's, from the website to the magazines to all the publications they produce. He knew about David and I thinking about setting up something, so he invited us to um, sign a contract where we redesigned Christie's International Magazine. Um, Christie's International Magazine goes out to kind of 12,000 of their top clients. Um, we were really excited about a new challenge, getting involved in the art world, seeing what kind of challenges this throws up. We were slightly apprehensive when, on day one at Christie's, um, Piero Manzini's um, shit in a can sold for £103,000. Um, so we were slightly worried, A, what we got ourselves into, and B, if we should rethink our design fee. Um, but onto the brief. The brief that Jeremy set us was to redesign the magazine, which has been going since the early 20s. Um, part, of bring, part of bringing Jeremy on board, who um, previous to Christie's was at Mr Porter, previous to that he was at Esquire with David and, and, and Wallpaper, um, was to kind of bring Christie's up to date and make sure that everything they were producing was looking fresh and modern and clean. Um, come straight on to what we ended up producing. Um, the first challenge from Jeremy was to try to separate the magazine into two. Um, this being that the magazine goes out um, every other month and it gets sent out to all of the, their top clients. And it's a mixture of, part of it is a kind of art features magazine, um, features in and around the art world, not necessarily directly linked to Christie's. And the other part of it is directly linked. It's about what Christie's is about, which is selling art. Previously in the magazines, it's all been kind of together. Um, and ourselves and Jeremy felt that maybe the content would be clearer to the reader if we separated them. So one magazine being more editorial content and one magazine being more driven at the sales. Um, again, a little way how we, how we kind of decided, it took us a little while to get our head around the review preview thing, but preview, kind of previewing all of the sales. Having two magazines was something that threw up a bit of a design challenge in terms of how we pieced these two things together. Um, we opted for a belly band um, route in the end. We went through many, many, many um, different versions of binding, which we'll get onto, and we gave our production <coughs> department many, many headaches in doing so, but we'll get onto that also. Um, in doing so, again, it's a very simple kind of method in terms of binding them, so that again, it felt like a bit of an event when the, um, when the Christie's reader kind of received their magazine. Our first port of call for, in terms of the design inspiration, the background of how we go, is that we knew that Christie's was steeped in, in, in history, and it was something that we wanted to make sure that we, that we got hold of and that we understood. Um, and, you know, I think our whole backgrounds in editorial design, you know, really taught us about, you know, completely fully understanding the, the content before even going near the design. So Christie's, having started in 1766, um, had archives and 
Um, they had everything right back from the logbooks of all of the um, pieces of art right through to all of the magazines they've been producing since the early 20s. And it was some amazing bits of information that we didn't really use in, in the end, but it was um, um, a stamp that they used after the Second World War where there was, the building was bombed and a lot of art pieces were destroyed. And it was a kind of a stamp that they kind of put on. Um, um, and they said that in the room where all of the logbooks were, there, were, um, there was this big silver collection about to go into um, as a sale. And um, obviously the, the building was bombed and it was on fire and all of the silver kind of melted. Um, um, but left pristine on the shelves with all of the logbooks and the, and the sale catalogs and everything, which they're really kind of precious about and was a great history. So we met a lovely lady called Linda who kind of took us through. Oops, we can't talk yeah, about we that. Yeah, we won't talk about Sorry, that. Sorry, yes. And, um, it's another one of my random slates. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We really, we, we found it really interesting going back through the catalogs and everything, this really confident use of topography, this really confident use of multiple typefaces. Um, and it was something that we thought would be quite interesting to take it in rather than keeping it super clear. We wanted to try and bring a bit of character and have a little heart back to the history, like we said, of, 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 the, of, the, um, of Christie's. And this kind of led on to the ways in which we designed our cover lines. Um, we kind of used a, kind of less of a mix than they did, but it was still kind of nodding towards um, um, the things that we found in the archive room. Um, a typeface, uh, Cheltenham, which they used quite heavily across catalogues and magazines, we kind of brought back to life and we kind of paired it with a few more modern typefaces to help present this this kind of modern feeling again. I think just going back a slide as well, um, just to go back to that, I mean, we kind of surprised ourselves it, because it's not really in our aesthetic, would you say? Mm -hmm. I mean, the first few takes of that was pretty much, it was very dry, and it was only after delving into the archive that we thought, let's try something a bit bonkers. Um, and I don't, norm I don't think we normally put like eight different typefaces and weights on no, certain not normally, lines. Yeah. It, it kind of goes against what we've been taught or it goes against what we've been doing. So we kind of, I guess we kind of surprised ourselves mm. by doing that, maybe. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also, this, the, the bottom image there saying watercolour drawings was something we found in all their sale catalogues. They had lots of um, typefaces with a, with a lot of character and a lot of they were very descriptive, um, whether it was a porcelain sale or a watercolour sale, and they had all these different typefaces they would dot throughout the magazine that we thought we'd bring through again, so we've got a display typeface that we can kind of dot around. I think this is back to you, yeah, back I believe, to me. double team exactly. working. <laughs> okay, so, um, um, the, you know, we won't talk too much about this, but it's the, the, the previous covers. Um, it was kind of semi-art celebrity based, and one of the things that we felt really strongly about was Again, through you know, delving into the archive and, and realising the rich aesthetic thing that it had on its side, what was the art itself. So we, kinda, we, we, we wanted to kind of move away from putting people on the cover and trying to make it look like a commercial magazine and really make the most of, of what they got. Um, and again, just delving into their archive, there was a real attitude and a real delicate approach to the way they used imagery. Um, always framing things, um, letting the crops speak for themselves, the edge of the artworks were always shown. And, and that was something that we kind of took to the extreme with the covers. Um, we put quite a heavy duty border on it, as you can see, um, maybe a bit too much sometimes. But, uh, you know, it, it really felt as if it was quite precious. Um, and it's got like a, a gloss foil on it and it's embossed and it feels really, it feels like a real artwork, a bit like one of those old books you used to have when you were growing up that's got an embossed cover on it. So it was a, quite a tactile approach as well. Um, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> <laughs> um, so inside, yes, let's talk a little bit about inside and, and I guess we could talk you through a little bit more about what we stole, oh sorry, paid, paid homage to from the archives. Um, there was a lot of illustration in the old catalogues, in the old, in the old magazines, some of, them quite, um, some of them quite grotesque in a way, but a lot of it was documenting what was going on in the, in the, um, in the, in the auction rooms at the time, and also in the viewing rooms. I don't know if you can see that rather grotesque picture in the top left-hand side of you, um, but there's a small fat man with a rather glamorous woman um, next to him buying some art, and I guess, I think that still happens these days, but... Um, <laughs> So we kind of, yeah, yeah we, we paid a little bit of um, a homage to that and we sent um, George Butler into the mix, to the auction rooms, just to start sketching what he saw in those days. And this is something that we're going to keep doing, every magazine that comes out. So he's going he's to head his way in there. Is it your turn yet still, Mike? Keep yeah, going. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> um, the other thing we stole, I mean, yeah, paid homage to, is the, um, the, the, the grid 
that, that we discovered in most of the old catalogs, which is a really strong functional grid, where basically all the slugs, and I don't want to get too graphic design like, all the slugs and all the grid, it's, everything's on the left hand side. So the left hand grid is the same as the right hand grid, basically. And it's something that we found really useful to play with. Um, here's a slide that doesn't really demonstrate that, but it was late last night when we were doing that. But I, th I think you can see um, that everything's indented from the left, and you can yeah, get a bit of an idea of that, I think. Um, and yeah, I think can back I to you. Yeah, your boss. So back to um, the kind of main man, really, James Christie, a Scotsman, which David was very proud of. Um, <laughs> Um, right from the very earliest of catalogues, um, we kind of wanted to have a little heart back to him, so um, he was very um, featured a lot through the early catalogues, uh, immediately, um, at the beginning facing left, but it was redesigned fairly recently to be facing forwards, to be facing right, so we, we did a kind of blind emboss of him on the cover, and like David said, I think in, this, in the kind of um, um, digital age, the, the, ta the tactility of the print is really important, so there's, a, there's an embossed texture on the paper, there's, there's, um, there's him embossed there, and like David said, there's a foil stamped kind of gloss over the image and over the logo, which made it all feel like a, a precious item that you kind of really felt excited about getting um, in the post. Um, through the next section, to the format, so um, Grant, our very lovely um, Christie's production person who is the patience of a saint, um, worked with us on many multiple ways of binding the magazine together. So we looked at ways in which they were perforated, come apart, wrapped in a wallet, um, multiple paper stocks, we went through all the kind of processes in quite a short amount of time, um, changed the page size, um, all trying to make sure that we got to the right um, result at the end. And every time he just nodded and smiled and said, yes, of course, boys. Yeah. So I kind of I think he's, he's quite, he's quite a, a pivotal figure in this bit where he really, he really is part of this magazine because without him, I don't think we would have had any of the production values no. that we've got. And he, he, you know, meeting those figures and meeting those characters when you go into a place to be a consultant is really, is really key to what you do. And I think we're really lucky in that aspect. So thank you, Grant, who's here. Thank you, Grant. Um, so again, going back to our binding technique, we ended up having our kind of perforated um, belly band that you kind of break open to reveal your two magazines. Um, I think this is David's typo, so I think I'll give it back to him <laughs> at this point. <laughs> That is my typo. Um, Apologise about that. So yeah, I think this is a bit quick fire. We're, We're on amber. Yeah. You've got this little box, which is green, amber, and red. We're red there means time. kill it. So we're not there. Oh shit, she just went on to red. Did you just do that? <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll quickly flick through some of the stuff inside, just to give you a little bit of a flavour about what we were doing. Um, a lot of the stuff that was in the magazine was stock photography and stuff like that. And me and Lee were very insistent that we shot a lot of stuff. Um, so that was Case Archie's Guide to LA Art and Galleries and Food Places. This was a thing called Collectors and Collections, which is going to be in each issue. Um, again, it was uh, it's James Mollison, who's quite a famous photographer for shooting people in their spaces. Um, when I say people in their spaces, he kind of does shoot them both at the same time, but he takes the person out of the space and shoots them next to their, their collection, if you like. And this guy up the top right was a, a little bit bonkers. He collects Marlon Monroe memorabilia. Um, and he's got her dresses and stuff like that. It's rather strange, but yeah, interesting <laughs> fellow. Um, so yeah, I guess you're just looking at a bit of... What was, what was, why is that editorial features sharing, not necessarily directly linked to Christie's, yeah. Um, a number of features that, again, would normally just be using stock photography and stuff like that. We were, we were kind of quite adamant that we got a lot of stuff shot, and I think that's where we kind of chat about being a team with Carl. But, but yep. Yeah, and even down to the top left image, we had a have to do quite a lot of persuading to try and allow them, uh, Christy, to um, let us take a picture of a work in progress of installing an <laughs> exhibition, because it's not really the done thing, with showing the crates, showing everything, showing it all a bit dark, wasn't necessarily seen. So things like that just helped it to make it a little bit more editorial, put a little bit more context than something that we <coughs> thought really elevated the magazine into a new kind of area. Hence why I'm not allowed to talk about fakes. <laughs> um, and again, just rather than shooting books just in a little pile and stuff like that, we've got a, a guy called Marius Hansen on board to, to kind of make a little bit of a sell out. So it's just, it's, it's more about, it was more about doing as much as we possibly could and changing it and being art directors, I think, as opposed to just taking the material and designing it as such. So the majority of that, um, all those examples there were from the review, the more editorial side of the magazine. Um, these are example spreads from the preview side, which is all linked to Christie's and their sales. 
So the magazines come out every other month in time with, with the sales. So this is a really important part of the magazine because this is Christie's business. You know? So we had to be really respectful to the art and really respectful to the, to the collections. And Christie's goes from <coughs> post-war contemporary art right the way through to Chinese ceramics, um, um, modern antique furniture, lots of, lots of um, very different departments. So we had to kind of really work with different departments to kind of produce um, the, the, um, the, the second um, magazine. Um, and make sure that our design didn't overpower anything but be respectful but also have a little bit of character and make sure that it still felt linked to the previous pieces. So it was a really interesting kind of exercise for us as designers and, and, and just being really respectful to this and but also trying to make, not make it look too much like uh, just a, a straightforward catalogue. So um, there was a few little features dotted around and, and, and it all kind of worked in the end with some kind of colour typography and um, with some beautiful kind of Gerald Richter and um, the imagery that we had was fantastic to work with. Um, it wasn't all plain sailing. There was a few kind of uh, um, errors along the way. We, we had to, after changing formats so many times and sizes so many times, um, right at the end of the process, we were just double checking all the ads that were coming in just to make sure that everything was okay. And we were cursing and swearing and losing our temper with the fact that the advertising had sent out all the wrong dimensions and everything was in the wrong space. And then we realized that it wasn't them, it was us. And we designed the entire magazine at the wrong size. Um, <laughs> Two days before it went to print. So I think I kind of realised that after being at Wallpaper for eight, for eight years, um, my mind was maybe still there and I set all the templates to Wallpaper Dimensions. Um, so our margins got quite a lot larger, but it worked, so it's great. Um, and then the second moment was uh, we finally sent everything to print and our first kind of belly band design was this idea of giving a glimpse through to a piece of art. Um, we had a kind of circle die cut belly band on the, on the magazine. Um, very happy it had all gone to press, not much sleep, every hour possible. Went to a beer to celebrate. The next day came in and saw the Freeze Masters catalogue sitting on our desk with a, with a die cut circle. And Christie's was being launched at Freeze Masters. So we. <laughs> it was not the best moment. So again, a little knock on Grant's door with our tail between our legs. Sorry, Grant, can we change all the artwork? So we kind of. Um, that was our second moment of panic. <laughs> Um, which led us to this, which, um, um, which we were really happy with in the end in terms of we really wanted that element of, of, of surprise within getting into the, into the magazine and kind of giving a glimpse to the artwork. I think we're almost done. Yeah, yeah, I think a couple of more slides. Um, so I, th I, th I think the point being here is, is me and Lee kind of left our jobs on the Friday and then on the Monday we kicked off basically a, a blank mini board with 240 editorial pages to fill. Um, we're not going to say we did it all ourselves because that would be a complete and utter lie. Um, Henry uh, Hitchcock, our first employee and our studio manager and the glue of the whole thing, held it all together for us. Um, Carly Gray, who produced all the shoots that we were boasting about producing, we never did that, it was um, Carly Gray. <laughs> she was on the phone 24-7. Um, and, and young Ben McLaughlin, a very talented young designer who's come on board and got us out of shit at the end of the schedule. Um, so it was a four-week process, really, from start to finish, commissioning, designing, dealing with the departments. We had a first day off the other day. It was very exciting. <laughs> but yeah, it really did take it out of us. And it, um, <laughs> and it also took it out of the office mouse. Well, I think he's sleeping, not dead. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it. That's us.